This is a video series for people who are new to Postman and will take you through the most important features of Postman and will speed up your learning. In this first video, we'll learn how to send your first request using the Postman app. Make sure you're not using the Postman extension for Google Chrome, which is deprecated and this will not allow you to follow along with these videos. Go to getpostman.com and download the app, which corresponds to your own operating system. If you're opening Postman for the first time, go ahead and create an account. It takes only seconds and having an account will help back up your data and the Postman app will make sure you never lose anything. Postman is an HTTP client which allows you to easily create requests in order to get data from an API. For this first example, we're going to use the GitHub Jobs API in order to create our first request. Every API out there has a documentation explaining exactly how you can interact with that specific API. In this case, the GitHub Jobs API exposes some internal jobs that are available within GitHub. So let's go ahead and copy this first example and run it from Postman. For this first request, the HTTP verb that we're going to select is get and get is always selected by default. But here in this dropdown, you'll have various options to choose from. The address, we're going to simply paste what you have copied from the GitHub Jobs API website. As soon as we have done this, you notice that the data editor for query parameters is now displayed. And in the address, we have a couple of query parameters, which allows us to filter some information. So for example, uh, by providing a value for description, we can search for a specific keyword, or we can select if this is a full-time or a part-time job, or where exactly should this job be located. So in this case, query parameters are used for filtering data. In order to run this request, all we have to do is click on send. In the lower part of the Postman app, you will now see the response that came from the API. The format that you see here is called JSON and JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. So this format allows different parties to exchange information without knowing much about one another. Additionally, what I want you to notice is the status of the response. 200 means that the response was successful. So the server understood what we requested and by answering with a 200 indicates that everything is okay. Postman makes it so easy to interact with parameters. So instead of specifying the parameters here and having to join them together, you can easily edit them here. So for example, if I'm looking for a job in New York, you can notice that Postman automatically adds New York to the address that we are using. And then the results that we get back are from New York as well. Additionally, using the Postman interface, you can easily disable existing query parameters. Or by looking at the documentation, you can look at additional query parameters which enable you to gather different sets of data. And if you later decide that you don't need a query parameter anymore, you can simply hover over it and click on the X, which will then delete the parameter. Now, after we have created our request using Postman and we played around with different parameters and understood how the API is working, the next logical step would be to persist our work. We can go ahead and save this request. In order to do that, click on save. And in Postman, every request is associated to a collection. So this is exactly what I'm going to do. A collection, create a new collection. I'm going to call this GitHub Jobs API. Additionally, it would be a great idea if I change the request name to something more meaningful. Let's say, for example, Python jobs. I'm going to save it in the GitHub jobs API collection. 
Now, if I close this tab and come later to Postman, I can simply open this collection and I will easily find a request which gives me Python jobs. I can do the same thing with other requests that belong to the GitHub Jobs API. I can save them in the same collection and then the collection will contain all the requests necessary in order to interact with a specific API. If the number of requests that you have in one collection is too big, feel free to create folders in order to organize that. So simply go over the collection and add a new folder. There's one last thing I wanted to point out when you are using query parameters with any API out there. The way you write the key for that specific query parameter is really important. So for example, if I write location, but with a capital L, and search for New York, you will see that I get jobs from Washington and Seattle and everywhere, but not from New York. And the reason for that is that the API was looking for location with a lowercase l, not with a uppercase l. So it does play an important role how you write the parameters that the API expects. What you need to pay attention when you're copy pasting information is that when you're selecting, sometimes you may be selecting multiple lines. So in this case, I've selected this address, but when I go back to Postman and paste this, you will actually see that I have a couple of new lines and you may not notice it originally, but once you're done editing, you will see here three dots that appear. And that means that you have sent a bit more information that you originally intended. And this can be a problem if you're sending a few new lines with your parameters or you're changing the address by adding a few new lines. The API may not understand what you are talking about. So anywhere in any form within Postman, if you notice the three dots, make sure that you double check this information and make sure you move any new lines that you see there. So for example, now the location will have these additional lines here. I can simply go and delete them because I don't need them. And now the address will look just as I intended originally. In this video, we had a look at a very simple API. We played around with query parameters in order to filter our data and we had learned about the response and the status code of the response. Additionally, you learned how to save this request to a collection so that you can better organize your work. I hope this was useful and if you have any issues or any questions, make sure you take a quick peek at the video description for some troubleshooting ideas or feel free to post a comment in the section below. See you in the next video.